Okay, here we go. Level two physics, how to make a straight line graph for your internal experiment. This video will cover how to make a graph from this experiment where you rolled the marble down the desk and you had lots of different times for different distances. The equations that came with the experiment are here. Underneath the equations are really important bits of information, including the two controlled variables. In this case, H and L both have to be in meters. So make sure you're familiar with the equations for each experiment and the controlled variables for each experiment. So before we get into Excel graphing, we probably want to review what we need to do. So the first thing you probably have already done is you've gathered your information. You've probably measured your controlled variables. In this case, that was again H and L, so the height of the ramp and the length of the desk. Then you've chosen which equation you want to use to pair up with the graph that you're going to make. Now what that means is, in the instructions, there are two equations here. I'm going to choose the second equation, the t squared equals 14L over 5GH times D. So what that actually translates to is it tells me I want the vertical axis to be t squared, I want the horizontal axis to be d, to fit the y equals mx. And then, once you choose that, you get to calculate the gradient that you expect on your graph before you make your graph. So what that means is something like this. In Excel, I've typed in my constants, my controlled variables, h 0.095, l 1.4. Here's that equation again, copied over from the instruction sheet. And I've calculated 14L divided by 5GH. And I get 14, or sorry, I get 4.13. So I've done this before I even make the graph. Alrighty? So that way, when we make the graph, we can look at the gradient of our line and do some comparisons. And at least we know if we're close or not. So back to the instructions. Let's see. We've calculated the gradient. Now we have get to type all of our information into Excel. So what that looks like is something like this, where your distances are all there. Notice the numbers don't have units. They're just numbers. You put the units above them. In this case, I stole information from some students in my class, and they did it for five times, five times for each distance. And again, these times have no units. They're just numbers. All the units you just slap above. No big deal. So there's all your data. You've typed it all in. Now, if we would have graphed, well, you probably, you probably, next thing you probably want to do is do an average. So what you do is you select a column and you insert. You actually do the average on the left. There will be a reason for this. It might make sense later. But basically, we want the average t in seconds. And you can have Excel do all this for you. You could do it in your own calculator, but you could just type in equals. Type in the word average. Make sure you spell it right. Do a bracket, drag your cursor across the four, five, three numbers you want, close the bracket. Now look at the code up here at the beginning of the, at the top of the Excel sheet. C9 to G9, C being the C column, 9 being the ninth row, G9. And basically that is how you do an average. You could drag the little bottom right corner and you can drag it down. So there's our averages. Now, a word of warning. If you were to graph these two columns, the first two columns in the spreadsheet, it would give you a curve. You might pass, you might not. What we want is a straight line graph. So our equation, which is up here, says we need to square the t. We need the t squared and the d. So we've got the d, but we don't have a t squared. So I need to insert a new column. And I need to do t squared. That little arrow is the bit above the number 6 on your keyboard. Now the units of t squared are seconds squared. A lot of people forget the units. When they square the thing, the units get squared. It's that simple. Now again, you could do this on your own calculator, or you could have Excel do it for you. If you want Excel to do it for you, you just type in equals. You click on the number you want it to square. You type that little arrow above the 6. You hit the 2. And that's how you code Excel for squaring a number. Hit enter, and it does it. Drag it down. There we go. 
you should again select a row, do your calculation by hand to make sure Excel is doing what you think Excel is doing. Alrighty, so now we're ready to make our graph. In Excel, all we got to do is highlight the numbers. There's no units on those numbers, so it's all ready to roll. We go to Insert. We go over here to that little button there, and we select the first one. It's called a scatter graph. And there's our graph. We need to do a few things to it, and we're almost done. Select the, the you click on this little button here, you click on the trend line, you click on this little arrow for more options, and this pops up. You scroll down to the bottom and you turn on the equation for your graph, so you don't need to do it by hand. You also click on this little button and you click on the axis titles so you can label the horizontal and vertical axis. You can make this bigger and drag it around. You can copy this graph into Word. If you do that, remember to copy your data table into Word as well. So, back to labels. We need to make sure that you know what the horizontal axis is. Mine's running from point 0.2 to 1. So if you look back here, that's my first column of numbers. Excel will put the first column of numbers on the bottom axis, unless you tell it not to. But for us, we just need to make sure we label this one distance which is D in meters. If you get the labels wrong, bad things can happen. So the vertical axis runs from almost one to almost four. And if you look back over here at column B, that's almost one, that's almost four. So that means the vertical axis is time squared. Never forget that you squared time. And the units for time squared are seconds squared, okay? So, the title, if you really want one, not that you need one, could be time squared versus distance. Now, the last thing we do to make our graph all ready to roll and print is we need to change this little equation here. You can increase the font size like you do everything else. That's easy. But we don't want to leave the Y and the X. We want to replace the Y and the X with the two variables on our graph. Now, on the Y axis, we have time squared. So we want to replace the Y with T squared. Okay? And that's how you type in squared. You want to replace the X with a D. So the last thing we're ready to do here to make sure you pass is you need a conclusion. Now, if you want to do it in Excel, one thing you could do, get rid of that. One thing you could do is you could insert a text box and then you can print the Excel sheet, okay? Or you could handwrite things, not a problem. But since I'm on the computer, I'll insert a text box as such, drag it over here, and conclusion. So, conclusions in level 2 physics are extremely short, extremely quick. Basically, you're explaining the graph you just made and the relationship between time squared and distance. And you can just slap down distance is proportional. If I can spell, there you go. Proportional to time squared. And that's it. That is your conclusion. We do have the formula on the graph. That's for merit. One of the excellence bits is comparing our expected gradient of 4.13 to our experimental gradient of 3.18. And with a good reason, why you think that's not the same, is one of the easiest excellence points in your discussion. So, that's how you do the graph. If you go back here to the instructions, there are other things here that you probably want to review, including all of the other things that could be in your discussion. So hopefully that makes sense. You might want to review this video a few times and practice. Good luck.